everyone. Welcome to our worship service this morning. Whether you're watching it on this Sunday morning or on a Tuesday afternoon, whether you are watching from near or far, we are glad that you are here. We begin uh, with some announcements. Just a reminder, of course, we continue to worship from home until further notice. So we will keep you updated as we move through these COVID times. When we know that it will be safe for us to gather again, we will certainly let you know. Our worship that we do offer online is made richer when we have many voices and faces. And so I invite you to participate in either the welcome or the scripture reading, or if you want to preach sometime, that would be great, or offer our learning together time, or if you wanna sing or offer prayers. Seeing each other's faces and hearing each other's voices reminds us that although we are not physically gathering for worship, we're still part of the church family. So let me know how you would like to be um, a part of worship. You will see this morning that I've changed the order of worship a little bit, so I'll look forward to your feedback on that. Uh, just a reminder for those successful bidders at our recent online auction, please be aware that you can pick up your items at the church this Friday, May the 7th from 3 to 5 or Saturday May 8th from 10 to 1 and if you have not already paid for your items by e-transfer please come prepared with your payment of exact cash or check that makes it much easier for us and thank you again for being part of this great fundraising event. I mentioned to you last week the we have a, a partnership with Prayer Bench and we are offering Stroll for Your Soul. That's a program that's starting on May 15th, 21 days of accompaniment through a brief email that would be delivered early each morning to your inbox that offers a, a practice or a reflection or a poem or a photograph that gives direction and encouragement to your time spent walking or jogging or biking or whatever you're doing to get out and enjoy this time of year. And our, our COVID restrictions ease uh, perhaps in May. It might be a wonderful way to connect with a friend or a neighbor by walking together. So if you would like to receive these daily emails, you see the email address on the screen there. Please let me know uh, by May the 10th. And just a note that you cannot forward these emails along. So if you have a friend who might be interested, please just encourage them to email me and uh, I will get them signed up. We look forward uh, to that time. And coming up, we're looking ahead to May the 16th and that is Joy Sunday. So I am encouraging you to um, take a a video or a photo or just write something up to let me know what it is that gives you joy, that brings you joy. And uh, we'll see how many uh, photos and videos we can get of people sharing the things that fill their life with joy. It's always a great thing to celebrate uh, birthdays in our congregation. And this is a busy week for birthdays. On May the 3rd, Max Tate is celebrating, then Ruth is celebrating on the 5th. Dan Prouse celebrates on the 7th of May, and a happy birthday to Mary in Sandham on the 8th of May. And if we didn't announce your birthday, but you are going to be celebrating this week, a birthday blessing to you as well. We do hope that uh, your birthday and the entire year brings all kinds of good things your way. Now let us prepare for worship. I realize each week I come to you with worship and I never really introduce myself, but um, my name is Lori. I'm the pastor at Mount Elgin United Church and today I welcome you to worship. If you're feeling anxious or uncertain or feel like you don't belong, we welcome you. If you've read your Bible from cover to cover or you've never even cracked its cover, we welcome you. There is a place for you here, just as you are. And so from my home to yours, welcome. And although we may not all be gathered in the same building at the same time, I light this candle and I invite you to light your own candle at home. And as we light our candles, we connect ourselves to each other. And we know that although we are not physically together, God can hear us all and can blend even distant voices into one song of worship. Won't you join me 
in prayer. May the rhythm of your breath, your step, your prayer bring you to the now. May the rhythm of the wave, the tide, the stream bring you to the now. May these rhythms connect and unify you with the eternity of being in the now. As you find yourself present in this place, as you find yourself in the now, may you be blessed by this time of worship together. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 8, verses 26 through 40. And I will be reading from the New International Version Bible. This section is entitled, The Preaching on the Gaza Road. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah, the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. The eunuch was reading this passage of scripture. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb before the shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his, his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, look, here is water. Why shouldn't I be baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and eunuch went down into the water and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared at Azotus and traveled about preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. Amen.
For those of you who go to school, whether you go to um, public school or high school, college or university, no matter what age you are, no matter what school you go to, whether you go in person or online, huh, you have a teacher and often more than one. And so today we're talking about those teachers, those people who teach us things. And we know that when we are going to school, teachers teach us all kinds of important things that we need to learn. But we learn from all kinds of different teachers in our lives. Think about maybe something that you learned to do now, that wasn't in school, that someone taught you. Maybe you learned how to cook. Or maybe you learned how to swim from a swimming instructor. Maybe you learned how to play a sport from a coach. Teachers come in all kinds of shapes and sizes and they teach us all different kinds of things. This week, a little friend of mine, he learned how to do something new. He learned how to do some construction work. And here is him uh, doing his construction at our friend's cottage. It's important to have people teach us things so that we can learn and grow. And we, we learn all kinds of things as we grow up. And it's important to learn those skills, but it's imp also important for us to learn about our faith. And we have people who, who can help us with that. Sometimes it's parents or grandparents. Sometimes it's Sunday school teachers. Sometimes it's a neighbor. I asked some people this week, if they could think of somebody who was important in their um, in their own faith life. And Carol um, sent me a little story about Byron and Annie Genvy, and they taught Sunday school um, about 60 years ago at the, I want to make sure I get it right, Salford Baptist Church. And so she talked about um, Mrs. Genvy, who would teach them how to memorize a new scripture every week. And that may be something that you... Uh, aren't familiar with but that if you ask your grandparents I bet that is something that they learned to memorize some scripture some part of the Bible each week. It's important to learn new things and we are always learning we never stop even no matter how old we get and the wonderful thing is is that as we learn and grow then we become teachers for somebody else. And it's really important for us to pass on the practical things, the things that we know how to do, but also important that we, we pass on the things that matter too about our faith and about how we grow in our relationship to God and to Jesus. And so I hope you can find somebody in your life that it would be a good teacher for you and then you would be a good teacher for them.
I love this passage from Acts. It's not one maybe that you are familiar with. We don't spend a lot of time in Acts in general. We tend towards the Gospels, but this one has just got so much dramatic flair. It practically begs for this dramatic interpretation. I can imagine the scene in my head. The angel, the wilderness road, an exotic eunuch in a chariot, the spontaneous baptism, Philip disappearing. In 14 short chapters, Luke has managed to pack in one big story. And as we drink in all the details, it it can seem a bit fantastical, a bit far-fetched, a story that we might wonder, did this really happen exactly the way that Luke has written it? But let's not go there first. Let's, Let's start by orienting ourselves in the story a little bit. So Philip, one of those early apostles, is instructed by a messenger to travel on a wilderness road from Jerusalem to Gaza. So it seems that the instructions that Jesus gave his followers before he ascended, remember remember those, he said to them, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Samaria and even to the ends of the earth. It seems like that's starting to take some shape because prior to this point, The apostles had been living out that calling in Jerusalem and Samaria. We read a a little bit about that in the past couple of weeks, but now it seems that the time has come to take that message out. And so Philip, he follows the instructions. He sets out on that wilderness road and he meets someone extraordinary, an Ethiopian who is a chief treasurer of a Nubian queen. Definitely very different from the locals, the people that Philip would normally be in community with. Matthew Skinner, who wrote a a wonderful book on Acts, says this, All in all, according to ancient norms, the court official does not fit neatly into the boxes people use to sort one another. He enjoys some forms of power and respect, but lacks others. He is neither male nor female. He may be Jewish or or well acquainted with Judaism since he has been to the temple and is reading a prophetic book, but he is very much a stranger from Philip's point of view. He and Philip can start from the same ground with a conversation about Isaiah 53, 7 and 8. But at the same time, if anyone in Acts represents the concept of outsider and the ends of the earth to which the message about Jesus will go, it is this court official. He is an outsider. Ethiopia was considered kind of that peripheral, the ends of the earth. And this most unusual character who doesn't fit into any of the boxes might might have given Philip some pause. And now this concept of outsider has been around forever. Our brains are, are designed to function in a binary system, a sorting system. Things are either this or that, black or white, in, out, male, female, haves, have nots. You get the idea. We can spend our whole lives, our whole lives trying to fit into these constructs. And they are constructs. We have constructed them. We as humans create these barriers that keep some people in and some people out. We have seen this play out even in the church throughout history. We have drawn denominational lines and made rules for people to follow, and we have seen the church divide and splinter a million different ways from the place that emerged when we read these stories in the book of Acts, the story of the early church. We currently have about 30,000 Christian denominations worldwide. 30,000! I was amazed when I looked up that number. And each of these denominations are structured differently around sacraments, membership, authority, theology, doctrine, organization, leadership, among other things. 
And I have to wonder, is this what Jesus had in mind when he instructed his followers to, to be his witnesses? Now, don't get me wrong. I think it is good and important to have structure and shape and substance. But at the heart of all that should be the heart of Jesus, should be the realization that the eunuch's question, what is to prevent me from being baptized, is a rhetorical question, not just for him, but for everyone. We have no idea what exactly Philip shared when he proclaimed the good news, but the eunuch, and man, I wish he had a name. I hate just keep calling him the eunuch, but, but we know that he recognized that this good news, whatever it was that Philip told him, this good news was for him, that God is generous and welcoming, and Jesus lived and died that we might know the depth and breadth of that love and that the Holy Spirit is working in and among all of us to make that welcome a reality, then of course, of course he belongs. He, the outsider, he who is, is different, he who may not understand every piece of scripture, understands that Jesus' love is for him. For many, unfortunately, the church has been a place of, of strict rules, regulations, and adherence. Singer Nicole Nordman wrote a song about her own experience growing up in such a church and her lyrics, some of her lyrics to her song, Dear Me, go like this. Some things are not as simple as we said. Remember when we thought there were a handful of some magic words to pray, a guarantee and a down payment on a mansion. Remember all the rules we made about the body and the blood, the hoops we made them jump through, though he offers it to everyone. He offers it to everyone. I share these lyrics, which are a reflection of, of her experience, not to say that one church or denomination is better than another, but rather to illustrate how we have twisted Jesus' love into a, a handful of magic words and hoops to jump through which are directly opposite to God's grace and love that is offered freely for everyone. Somewhere along the line, we have lost our way. We have lost sight of the gospel story. We have forgotten the truth that Nicole writes about in the last two lines of that same song. Last two lines, she says, but Jesus loves us, this I know, and there are no exceptions. So we might start by looking around our church and, and seeing who's missing and ask ourselves why they might be missing. We might, might start by having conversations with those same people instead of making assumptions. We might start by asking ourselves what we are doing to witness to God's gift of love and grace and acceptance. I don't have all the answers, but I do believe that God is at work in the world through the power of the Spirit. And that spirit is in each one of us, empowering us to, to do this hard and holy work of acceptance and love. As for church rules, 
I don't have the answers to all that either. But this past year has perhaps revealed to us that we have the capacity to be far more nimble and flexible than we have ever been. It has revealed the things that are important and the things that perhaps we could hold a little more lightly. Author Brian McLaren writes about moving away from a, a beliefs-based church membership. Beliefs-based church membership uh, looks like this. We first believe, and then we behave, and, and then finally, when we, when we believe the right thing and we behave properly, when, when we've completed those first two, then, then we get to belong. Instead, McLaren believes that we should begin with belonging because we all do belong. And once we get that belonging part right, once we say, yes, you know what? Come in, you belong. There are no rules that you need to follow. There's no hoops you need to jump through. Once we get that part right, we can celebrate and lift up the loving practices of faith that Jesus teaches us about. That's the behaving part, these loving practices of faith the living out our faith. And then when we have lived into it, when we have experienced and been part of something so transformational, that leads us to belief. Instead of saying the right words and, and praying the right prayers and, and going through the right rituals, we move to belief through acceptance and practice, safe within a community of faith that has welcomed us and holds us and walks with us. And we trust the whole time that God is at work in each one of us. When I think about that, I think about a conversation that, that the official board at Mount Elgin had recently uh, around baptism. Our United Church Manual states that in order for a child to be baptized, one or both parents must be a member in good standing. And now the governing body, which is the, the board, does have the right to make exceptions to this requirement. And so one member of our board beautifully stated, I think if parents want to have their child baptized, whether or not they are members, it should be approved. And then we leave it up to God. Amen, sister. Amen. give out of our gratitude and our abundance. We give to the work of God, that work of God that is going on all around us, often unseen, but we trust in its presence. And we give to support that work, to participate in the work so that God's kingdom will be known far and wide. If you would like to support the mission and ministry of Mount Elgin United Church, you see all your options on the screen. You may arrange for an e-transfer. You might consider signing up for PAR. You can drop off checks to our treasurer or to the church office, or you can seek out the Canada Helps button on our website. If you would like to support the mission and ministry of Newark United Church, you can mail your offering to our treasurer, Allison, and you see her address on the screen. We do give thanks for all the ways in which the work continues through your support of our local congregations. And so now let us offer a blessing on these gifts. We offer our gifts to you, Lord, with grateful, cheerful hearts. Thank you that you meet our needs on the journey, providing what we need when we need it. Trusting you, we can share what we have with others. And we do this joyfully together today, in Jesus' name. Amen. O oh God, our Father Earth and Mother Earth, help us to center our hearts, our thoughts, our yearnings, to let go of past wrongs and uncertain futures, to let the air out, 
and take a simple breath in here in the present of your eternal time. We give thanks for all the ways in which you make your presence known in the changing seasons, the nesting birds, the kindness shown by neighbors and strangers. We see but a fraction of your love poured out, and yet it is enough to sustain us. We give thanks that we can come before you and pour out our hearts in prayer together, joining with you in weeping for the tragedies that take place around the world. Each day we hear of the deadly surges, cases spiking, mounting deaths, the stuttering of businesses opening, locks down, the discourse around wearing masks and distancing and vaccines. Help us to understand our role as we enter this second year of the COVID-19 pandemic. We mourn for those killed and injured during the explosion of oxygen tanks at a hospital in Baghdad, Iraq. A massive blaze that has destroyed portions of the hospital where every resource is badly needed to combat this pandemic is tragic. We grieve with the people of India as we hear where oxygen has run out and staff witness their patients gasping and dying. Lord have mercy. Help the nations that can send supplies, ventilators, oxygen and vaccines to pour from their abundance. We know that people are struggling mentally and emotionally. Help us to be gentle and tender to each other, gracious and forgiving. Help us to draw the circle wide, looking around for those who are missing, sharing the good news story with those who have not heard about your grace and your love. Through our connections, one by one, we gather people into your kingdom. Forgive us when we draw the lines when fear or mistrust or anger or hatred fill our hearts and we are led further from you and your desire for our lives. We are a community that believes in the power of prayer and so we lift up our concerns for our community this day, especially for Lynn, Marjorie, and Keith, and in the silence we lift up the prayers of our own hearts. This week, remind us that your spirit is all around us, every hour of every day, above us, below us, and within us. We are never alone. Knowing that you are hearing us better than we are speaking, we leave all these prayers with you. And we join our voices in the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever.
And now, as you get ready to go out and live this week well, traveling along this journey of life with all the various people that you may come into contact with, we know that there is much work to do, hard and holy work. But we don't do it alone. We make space for God to do God's work, for the Spirit to move in us and in others. And so we go out. We leave, but we remain connected and loved and loving. We leave and yet Christ abides. We leave and are never left. Thanks be to God. Amen.